love you, Lord, we praise you, we adore you, glorify your name, Lord, we Jesus, I adore. 
Father, oh how I love you, Lord I praise you, we adore you, Lord.
There's people, listen, as you're watching me, receive your healing. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me. He said, tell the people the power of the Lord is present to heal. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive my healing. I receive deliverance from my sickness. I receive you touching my body, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for taking away my infirmity, my high blood pressure. Thank you for touching my nervous system. Thank you for touching my belly. Ulcers will not touch you. Cysts will not touch you. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by. All I have been in thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, the mercies I see, and all I have needed, thy hands have provided. The power of God is falling. Father, I pray for everyone. I touch and agree that you be healed from sickness and disease. Every sickness and disease, as you're watching me, Father, I release the power of God. I release the power of God. I release the glory into your physical body. Body, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be made whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I reverse the diagnosis and I decree victory. I decree the blood of the lamb into the health, into the body. In Jesus' name.
the lap upon the throne and on to you to be whole. I command your body to be whole. I command your blood to be purged. I command your mind to be whole. I command your soul to be whole. In the name of Jesus. your sicknesses to go. 
In the name of Jesus, I command all your diseases to go. I speak life, the life, the healing life of Jesus into your body. I speak health into your body. Receive your health. Receive your health. Receive your health. Your wholeness in Jesus' name. Be thou whole. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Oh, sing hallelujah to the Lord. over your body in the name of Jesus I speak deliverance over your body I speak deliverance over your mind I command you to be free from every yoke from every burden from every sickness I speak to your body I speak to your mind I speak to your spirit be whole in Jesus name the Bible talked about be sanctified whole in your spirit soul and body that your body soul and spirit be sanctified whole until the day of Jesus
I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. 
go through surgery on you. Everybody will go through surgery. Whether it be through life experiences, all these different things, everything is an opportunity for surgery. God has to take out the old heart. Why do you think that the Bible talked about I'll take out the heart of stone in Ezekiel and give you a heart of flesh? Because he said, I'm going to do surgery on you. So even in the text of the Bible, God saying, I'm going to do surgery. I'm going to take out the heart that you currently have and give you the heart that you're currently supposed to have. So it's surgery. God would say, I'm going to do surgery on you. Why did he say, I'm going to give you a heart of flesh? Because if you get hit in your flesh, you can feel it. So he was going to give you a heart of flesh, meaning a heart that can feel his heart. That can feel when he's grieved. Feel. See, saints, I want to share this with you. This is so powerful. What happens is a lot of people have not received the heart of God yet. So that's why you can feel if God is grieved, they don't feel if God is grieved. You can feel if God is pleased, they don't feel if God is pleased. You can feel if the wind of the Spirit blowing you here, they can't feel if, feel if the wind of the Spirit. But God will always give you a prophet that has his heart. So you can learn of me. Come learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He'll always give you a prophet that knows his heart. So you can learn of him. So you receive the surgery of God every day. Not every week, not every month, not every year. Every day, you need surgery to be done. To take out the heart that's not supposed to be there. To give you the heart that's supposed to be there. The mind that's not supposed to be there to the mind that's supposed to be there. You see, every day you need that. You need God to do surgery on you. What a wonder you are. You shine like a bright morning star.
Now, you know, I have some nice, we give you all the praise, Father. I have some nice clothes, you know, and uh, like these shirts right here are custom-made shirts. I custom-made them. Now, here's the crazy thing. <laughs> and so I ha I've had these shirts for some time. When you worship that long, you get drunk. It's crazy. Like, see, I'm fully alert. I'm fully sober. But you get extremely intoxicated by the presence of God. So, I, and you're going to understand through the teachings that I'm sober. But I'm fully drunk. <laughs> so. My. My designer made this these shirts for me. And so. I've had them for some time. And I was thinking in my mind. I was saying. I will give. I will wear these. When I'm doing, if if the father tells me to do another conference, I said, I'll wear, I'll wear these at the conference. I'll wear these at the conference. And so the father spoke to me and said, son, wear those shirts today. Wear, wear the shirt today. <laughs> and here's what he said. He said, look at the shirt. He said, sew it. He told me to sew the shirt. And when he said the word sew it, I realized the concept. He told me, he said, if you don't sew it, how could I give you a harvest of more? Now, saints, his was crazy to me. In my mind, I'm thinking, I have the money to get it. But he's using this as a harvest. And saints, the Lord gave me a powerful revelation. That there's things in your life that you can hold on to for your safety that you have built. It don't even just have to be money. It could be other things that you have have for safety purposes. Like you say, I'm not going to use this until an event, or I'm not going to use this until I go to this celebration, or I'm not going to do this. And you're blocking the increase of that. Remember, it says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So though money is the main, because we live in a money moving system that you cannot do um, anything without finances. So God magnifies that to show us so that we can be financially um, blessed, financially anointed, but it works for every arena. And so I was thinking I'll save these shirts until I do a conference, Lord willing, if the Lord had me do a conference and the Lord spoke to me and said, sow it. See, I'm sewing this shirt into today, into this broadcast, into today. And if God said sow it, that means that there's a harvest in sowing it. Here's the point. The Lord don't want you to have anything that locks you in. Everything in your life should be in the realm of liberty. What you possess should be in the realm of liberty. What you have should be in the realm of liberty. What around you should be in the realm of liberty. Remember when Elisha asked that woman, what do you have in your house? What he's showing her, everything should be in the realm of liberty. Go get, go borrow, or, or he told her, go, go take that little oil and, and go borrow vessels. Everything. should be in the realm of liberty, everything that you have. 
And see, when you get in the place of holding on to things, you stop God. When you get into the realm of holding and clinging on to things, you stop the anointing. When you get into the realm of, hey, I need to hold on to this until the right time, until, until something is worthy of it, you stop. Stop everything. You stop God's desire to bless you. You stop God's desire to get something else to you. Faith is not about what you gain. It's about what you leave. The Lord gave me that statement about two days ago, 48 hours ago. Faith is not about what you gain, it's about what you leave. Not about what you can gain, it's about what you can leave. So when the, when the man has his biological dad die, the Lord Jesus said, let the dead bear their own dead, come follow me. Faith was about what he can leave, which is his, his, his biological dad, his biological dad, Funeral, his biological dad, celebration. God said, I don't even want you to bury him. Come on. Because faith is about what you can leave. The father told Abraham, leave your father's house. It's about what you can leave. Leave your father's house. So, uh, uh, he told Lot, leave Sodom and Gomorrah. Leave Sodom and Gomorrah. It's about what you can leave. It's about what you can leave. Moses had to leave Pharaoh's house. And notice his assignment was to oppose Pharaoh. God, whatever God tells you to leave, you're not of. That's why he's telling you to leave it. If you stay, you will become it. If you leave, you'll protect yourself from ever becoming it. What you affiliate yourself with is so powerful. Some people don't understand the laws of association. If you affiliate yourself with them, you say, well, I'm not connected to them. We're just, but you're of them. God always tells you to leave what you're not of. The Lord Jesus told Peter to leave being a fisherman because he was not anointed to fish for fish. He was anointed to fish for souls. Right ability, wrong association. You hear me? Right ability, 